welcoming Dave Rickles back in MMA Oddsbreaker. Getting ready to fight Belcher 145 against Michael Chandler. This is a, a big, well, a storied fight. I mean, obviously, it's a, it's another big fight. It seems like that you're not getting any easy fights anymore in Bellator. It kind of seems like they're, they're putting you to all the top dogs as quickly as possible. You know, is that kind of what you're feeling like, too? Yeah, absolutely, man. And that's the way I like it. Uh, I, I, I feel like I'm – so I just fought Alessio. Tough opponent, great opponent. Uh, he had a challenging fight with Will Brooks. Um, and, you know, I think we're painting a path here. I think what we're doing is we're, we're painting the path of retribution for caveman. So, uh, we're going to have a beautiful scene when I fight for the belt, uh, after I beat Chandler up and kind of redeem, I think what I consider my worst loss. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't look, let me just be honest. It, 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 the fight didn't go long enough for us to tell if you look like shit or not, you know, during that fight against Chandler. It was over in 44 seconds. It was just like. A barrage uh, uh, of punches came at you, and the next thing you know, you're you're down on the ground. And it wasn't like anything really happened per se, other than you getting hit. Um, so it's Absolutely. tough. To, it's tough to say if you were trained right, if you felt right, if you're mentally square during that fight because it was over so fast. Can you tell us kind of where you were at before you walked into the cage? Uh, you know, training is always never training hard and pushing my body has never been a problem for me. But, uh, at that point I wasn't mentally where I needed to be. I didn't believe in myself enough to, uh, I just didn't, you know, I, I tried on, you know, when you fight for the belt, you try on the belt and you know, it, it didn't even feel right on me. Even when I was trying it on, I didn't feel like I should have been there at that time. And, uh, now I just feel a lot different and uh, a lot better about things and my mind's in the right place. And, uh, you know, well, you know, to... and plus you were talking about something, we're talking over two years ago. That was back in 2013, the last time you fought Mike. And since then you've had four other fights, you know, three wins, and, well, two wins, a loss and no contest. Um, yeah, me, looking, me looking back on the fighter that I was then, I was not good. I was, I was a joke, man. And I, I had, you know, I was just tough enough to get to where I was at at that point. And then, uh, you know, now I've really seen a lot of big improvements in my game. And uh, I think we're we're breaking into me being, an you know, uh, a professional athlete per se. You know, I'm actually taking shit serious for once. So let's talk about the Alessio fight. You, you, it's a no contest because you need him. You know, uh, he was on. He was on his hand. He had a hand down. You need him in the face. It's a ground opponent. So obviously, it's an illegal technique. Um, that was in the first round as well. That. How did you feel that fight was going up to that point? Um, excellent. Uh, I started off, found my range very quickly. I felt extremely confident. Uh, uh, it's just. <laughs> God damn, man. I feel good when I fight now. I'm mentally in a much better place, and I have the confidence through the roof. And when I went out there, I felt it. And, you know, as soon as I started touching him whenever I wanted to, I, I was hitting him basically at will as soon as I heard him uh, stalking him down. And I, I felt really good. And I don't think that that fight ends any other way other than him getting beat up. But um, on that night, at least, you know. Uh, so, you know, I. Man, it just sucked to end that way, but it is what it is. You've got a new attitude. You obviously spend a lot more time paying attention to your training. Your diet's better. And it looks like you have a little different uh, uh, beard cut and haircut. Like you've went and got a full makeup done. Like, are you uh, um, turning a little metro on us now? Um, yo, Caveman 2.0 is all about that. That's what it is. It's just uh, breathing new life into who I am and uh, – the new fighter that I am and you know, I'm embracing it, man. And it feels good. Um, and it's translating really well into sparring mitts, drilling, wrestling, jujitsu, everything that I do, man, I work a little bit harder and, uh, feeling a little bit stronger, faster and all of the above. There, uh, are you shaving your legs and arms now too? To go along with this new? <laughs> no, hell no. That is like the least caveman thing ever. So uh, there's none of that going on. All right, so how's your family life doing right now? Because uh, you wanted to push this interview by a couple of minutes because your son is sleeping, and you said actually, then you immediately hit me back. I was like, no, 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 it's actually better. It's better earlier because he's because he is sleeping. Yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, my, I, 
I've got a really good situation. My girl is amazing and helps me out with all my training needs. I go in and out of town, uh, Colorado and um, other other cities here around Kansas, Kansas City, uh, Manhattan. But anyway, my girl's amazing, and there's two days out of the week that I watch my boy while she goes to work, and uh, you know that's Daddy Day, and uh, yeah, that's he's in nap time, nap mode. Is it um, – what happens in those two days that you're watching? Is, how is your training then on those two days? Those two, your two days that you're off from training or is it – is it you, st- you still get it worked out but you got to wait till, till mama comes home from work? Nah, no days off, man. Uh, I'm fortunate enough that I got a lot of uh, family that loves to help me out and this and that. And, uh, you know, I, I watch my son for the most part when I – when it's, you know, uh, my time to do so. But um, I we get our training in. Uh, I actually – I go run with him. I've got a, like a little running stroller thing that I go run with him and we go to the park and play around and run a few miles and this and that. So I get my work in still. Is it been difficult for you? But, you know, this, I mean, I mean, I know you love your son. You're not, you wouldn't take it away from anything, but has it been a lot more difficult trying to get train camps together, trying to get the schedule together, trying to get stuff put together for, for, you know, not train camp time are easy. It's the train camp time that you really got to focus. Has it been harder with your boy around? No, not really. Uh, it was when he was, uh, an infant. Um, it was really tough. He was, he was, he was hard to, he, he was hard to watch. And mama was working a lot more. Mama was working five days a week. And, uh, so I was on daddy duty all the time. And, um, you know, now I've got a just a great situation, man. Um, I go train really early. Like I've been up since five thirty this morning. Uh, I I got a workout in and train some people, and then um, you know picked him up, and then oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're still training people, and you're almost at the end of your training camp. Your fight's November sixth. This is the yeah. middle of October. Doing this interview, that's great, man. That's the that's the amazing thing about it. You know. I've felt in the past where I just didn't want to talk to people. I didn't want to, I didn't want to deal with nobody, man, because I was just miserable during my training camps because I was working so hard. I was working so damn hard just to get down to weight and just to be in fight shape that I was like unhappy about everything, man. And like, that is the biggest, one of the biggest changes, man, is I'm, I'm loving every minute of my training camps. So your your weight's so much easier to make now. What's the reason behind it? Um, less booze, less crab rangoon. Basically, none of those actually. So, uh, <laughs> uh, what I've really done though, man, is, is is really simple. Like I just decided, hey, um, I want I I want to eat these foods. I've just cr- like restructured the way that I think. Um, I want to eat healthy because I want to be a dominant person in the cage. So I'm not, I don't have these like, Oh, I wish I could eat that right now. Oh my God. I'm so jealous of you eating pizza. Like, fuck that. I'm going to be in a cage fist fighting another guy for X amount of dollars, November 6th. And that's fucking cool. And it doesn't get much better than that. It doesn't get any better than that. To be honest with you, it, it, I mean, it really doesn't, you know, I've embraced it. <laughs> so, You've got this guy, Mike Chandler, coming up, wrestler, quick, athletic, um, from Missouri as well. You know, uh, it, how do you see this fight breaking out? Like, how do you how do you feel like you and Mike match up in this in this mess? Um, you know, it's funny, man. I was just talking about the. Uh, you know, I've done a couple of interviews already and stuff like that. But uh, man, I personally think that. In Bellator, at least, you know, like Marcin Held, Will Brooks, uh, you got Josh Thompson in the mix now. I think that of the top tier guys, the worst matchup for me is Michael Chandler. No, is that because is that because of the way the first fight went, or is that a real honest assessment that you're like, look, this guy's a bad match? Style wise, style wise, but I, I think that it's one of those things where I'm also kind of. I can be the worst matchup for him as well. Um, I think that Chandler is an excellent athlete. He's an excellent athlete. He's going to be fast. He's going to be explosive. But I think that I break him. I break him. And uh, I think that he fades away. Um, I think that, um, you know, I've seen it in a few fights. I think that I have. And, uh, you know, I feel very confident that I, I have the best conditioning at 55 
um, that could possibly exist out there. And I don't fade away. I don't gas out. And um, that's, you know, that's where I look to take advantage in this fight. I look to. You, think you're gonna, you really think you're going to break Michael Chandler? Like you're going you're gonna to break this guy mentally in the middle of a fight? Um, you, look, we're two extremely. Uh, don't don't try to don't try to fence line your your words. Fencing around nothing. We did this last time. This is the this we did this last time when I told you I was gonna break John Alessio and you told me that I wasn't. So I mean, we did this dance before, but uh, you know, I feel very confident with what I'm capable of, man. And uh, there's always a point where I, in a fight where I can look at where I, I look them in the eyes and I can see that they're tired. I'm not saying he's gonna quit. Michael Chandler's not a quitter. That's not what I'm implying. What I'm saying is I'm going to see that he's tired, and you're going to see my big boner start to grow because I'm feeling extremely confident and ready to finish him. So, uh, you know, it's just one of those things, man. I feel excellent at what I'm great at, and what it is 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 seeing weakness in others and and exploiting it. What What do you weigh right now? What am I weight? Right now. What do you weigh right now? Oh, 172. And what are you going to weigh the day of the fight? Probably about 170. Okay. So you put back on about 15 pounds, there, thereabouts, in between making weight and, and fighting. That's natural for you, and it's relatively easily. You feel you feel like you're at like 80%, 90%, you know, when you walk into that, when you walk into that cage. No one's 100%. There's always a banged up knee or a tweaked elbow or something. So folks at home, don't think I'm trying to say anything to David like he's not 100%. We're just never 100% we walk in. We're always beat up somehow. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, so I think that uh, – okay, I'll just give you an example. I used to walk in. I would almost weigh 180 when I'd walk in. I'd almost weigh 180 when I walked in because I cut – I would cut from – you know, I, the week of my fight, I'd be weighing 175. And um, it was extreme. I mean, it was – I don't even know how I did it, to be honest with you. But I was winning fights like that, so I didn't really have a big reason to change. And uh, I just feel excellent now that I've got my weight much lower. My body fat is uh, a lot lower. I'm a lot leaner. I'm a lot faster. Um, I feel a lot stronger. And, you know, man, I feel like I'm walking in it, you know, just it, that's 15 pounds over. But I'm walking in, I don't know, 85 percent. I don't know. <laughs> Yes, man. It's a numbers game, man. Like, I guess that's where I'd sit. M MMA has got new new drug testing. The protocols coming in throughout all the commissions. The new, you know, IV ban, you know, that guys are allowed to use IVs. And now there's a rumor they might do a 10-pound weight game in between weigh-in and fight night. So you walk, in the, you walk in to get ready and get warmed up for fight night, you can only be 10 pounds over. For a guy like you, that's another fight. That's five pounds less than what you normally walk in for. How much do you think? If that, I mean... No one knows if it's actually going to come to fruition. No one knows if that was going to come in. But do you think that's going to make a difference in, the, in another another movement in how the, how the the face of the sport looks? Because now we're going no drugs, so we've, we've seen the sport change with all of a sudden this other drug testing, no IVs. We're going to see the sport change again, and all of a sudden now if they decide to put a ten pound max in on this weight cutting deal uh, uh, or uh, this weight gain deal after after weighing day, do you think that's going to change the face of the fights again? And how do you think it's going to affect you? Um, man, a lot. <laughs> See, I, I ideally, I really, I, I think that perfectly my body fights, uh, best probably at a, you know, 165, 170 range. Uh, but that just doesn't exist for me. Um, the, there's no weight class for that. So I, I'd like to, I don't know, man, they, they'd have to restructure everything. They'd have to put in new weight classes for me to be happy. So I don't really care too much this or that but I, I i'm not really for the iv ban um yeah. but shit it is what it is man you gotta you gotta you gotta play by the rules man and um i de i mean i'm definitely i'm what i'm i'm i hate drug users i hate people that have to put that that shit in their body for whatever reason i don't hate them but i just don't agree with it well, you hate it when they're trying to compete against you. When it's now it's completely illegal, and they've they've done a better job of catching it. So, yeah, I, I understand your point. Professional athletes trying to make a career out of this, especially when like one fight means a lot in this sport these days. Uh, yeah. You know, there shouldn't be any room for that.
That's uh, Dave Rickles getting ready to fight Mike Chandler coming up here in Bellator 145. Um, last question. I think you said it earlier. You beat Mike. Uh, the title fight is going to happen for you, right? Is that what Bellator has told you, or is that just your feeling? Oh, no. Eh, I, this is sort of feeling I got, man. It's going to happen one way or the other. Um, I'm just going to get through some bodies, man. I'm going to stack them up until I get what I want, and that's championship. All right, Dave, thanks so much for coming on. MMA Asbaker, man, it's always a pleasure. Man. I love I love talking with you. Um, thanks, man. This is going to be a great fight, guys. I, I can't wait to watch this thing happen. This is between you and Mike. It's going to be explosive, and and I want to see who gets tired first. That's like my, my breakdown on this is now with the experience level from before is who actually gets tired first. And when you said you're going to break them and then went through your explanation, I was like, oh, that's weird because that's my breakdown too. So. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, well, good, good. We're, uh, I'm, I'm excited for it. I think that this fight is uh, – this entire card is huge. This is an amazing card, and I really, truly do feel uh, blessed and happy to be on it. And, uh, man, show them what Caveman 2.0 is all about. I like it. I like it. All right, Dave, we'll talk again soon, brother. Have a good rest of your training camp. Thank you.